Welcome to Hartman Math. This is lesson 9.5, the binomial theorem. Listed here, which says if we're expanding a binomial, two terms, to a power, instead of just doing all of the multiplication, there is a pattern, there is a formula, and here it is. Uh, whatever the exponent is, we're going to take a combination of that many items, choosing that many, so NCN, a combination. We'll see how to do that in a bit. And then the A part, the first term, which we'll call the A part, gets raised to the power of N, and the B part, the second part, uh, gets raised to the power of zero. And then the next one over, we're gonna add to that NC, and then the number that we're choosing here drops by one, exponent for the a part the first term drops by one whereas the exponent for the second part the b part goes up by one and so on and that continues the pattern so this is a combination you will sometimes see this notation it's a little bit older notation used to represent combination as well So let's go ahead and find some coefficients, do some combinations. So remember these are just two different notations for the same thing. Let's see we, how we can access that on a graphing calculator. All right. First thing we want to do since we're going to evaluate 11CR is type in that first number, 11. Then to get the C, the combination, we're going to find that in the math menu, math, arrow over on the top menu to PRB, and we're looking for number three there, NCR, so I can hit three, so it's say 11 NCR, and we wanted four, enter, we get that answer to be 330. Remember, the second one was those parentheses, 6 on top of 0, which means 6C0. So we'll type in the 6. Math. Choose NCR0 equals, and that is 1. All right, Pascal's triangle. So one, and then it's what's in every successive row starts and ends with the one. So the next row below this will start and end with the one. But in the middle, we're going to sum these two. We'll get two right there. The next one starts and ends with the one. Finding the sum of one and two is three. Two and one is three. You're going to see that Pascal's triangle has symmetry. It's going to look the same coming from either direction. So the next one, 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 four, six, four, one. And we could keep going. It turns out these numbers are combinations. So if we don't consider the top one, we say it starts here, row one, row two, row three, row four, row five, where that second number is the, identifies the row we're talking about. This one right here would be 5C4, 5C5, 5C4, 5C3, 5C2, and so on. The combinations. So when we're trying to identify those combinations in the binomial theorem, use Pascal's triangle, we could use our calculator, either one. So let's start with expanding a binomial. We're going to use and get practice with the binomial theorem. With this one with the third power, probably it's debatable which one's going to be most effective using the binomial theorem or just multiplying it out. Probably wouldn't be too difficult with three factors. We might be more accurate going with the binomial theorem. So let's take a look at what this looks like. So each term is going to contain three things. The combination, the 
A part and the B part. So our combination, since it's to the third power, we're going to start with 3C3 times A to the power of 3 times B to the power of 0. To that, we will add, moving on to the next term, combination 3C now. Remember that we're choosing there from our combination goes down by 1. Power for A goes down by 1, whereas the power for B goes up by 1. Continue the pattern. Plus 3C1 times x to the first times 2 to the second plus 3C0. x to the 0, 2 to the 3rd. And now we just simplify. So by calculator or whatever, 3C3 three three is 1, x to the 3rd times 1 plus 3 times x squared times 2 plus 3 times x times 4 plus 1 times 1 times 8. So final answer, and we simplify one more time, x to the third plus 6x squared plus 12x plus 8. And you'll notice that the number of terms that we have is one more than our x. Example 5. Let's do another one. We're going to see at this point, once we reach an exponent of 4 or higher, the binomial theorem is going to be much more efficient and probably more accurate. So, we start with a combination. It's now to the fourth power. So, 4C4 four times A, which is now 2X, to the fourth power times b negative five to the zero power plus four c three two x to the third power. negative 5 to the first power. Or C2 2x squared negative 5 to the third error. Negative 5 to the second plus 4C1 2x to the first negative 5 to the third plus 4C0 2x to the 0, negative 5 to the 4th. Right, let's simplify all of our terms. 1, 2 to the 4th power is 16x to the 4th times 1 plus 
4C3 is 4 times 8X cubed times negative 5 plus 6 times 4X squared times 25 plus 4 times 2X times negative 125 plus 1 times 1 times 625. One more simplified, let's get our final answer. 16x to the fourth minus 40 times 4, 160 x to the third. 100 times 6 plus 600 x squared minus 8 times 125, 1000 x plus 625. Example 7, finding a coefficient or a term. So sometimes we may not want the entire expansion, just one of the terms or the coefficient of that term. So we don't have to do the, expand the whole thing out and just look for that. So we can kind of be aware of what it is we're looking for. We're going to try to find the coefficient of x to the fourth. So if we look at, here's our a, and here's our b. Clearly it's going to be the a that's going to lead us to the x to the fourth power. That's where the x's are. So the question is, what would we raise this to, our a part, to get x to the fourth? Since this is already x squared, Clearly, that would be we would raise a to the second power. We're doing to uh, raising to the eighth power. So, if we think of that, then our three parts are combination a c. Since we're going to raise this to the second power, eight c two. So here's our a to the second power. That's going to mean b has to be raised to what power? two exponents here need to add up to the 8. So we've got 8c2, b gets raised to the 6 because these two need to add up to the 8. So now we can evaluate. Do 8c2 on the calculator. We're going to have to square this. We're going to have to raise that to the 6th power. We multiply that by 2 squared, by 3 to the 6th. We're going to get our coefficient. That's all they were looking for is the coefficient, 81,648. That's it for today. See you next time.